Well, a warm welcome to our latest update where we, we let the fans know what's happening at the club. With me today are AFC Chairman Dave Cormack and AFC Commercial Director Rob Wicks. Guys, welcome. It's good yeah. to see you. Good to see you in person and not in a yeah. Zoom call. It's been um, 13 and a half months, I think, Mal and Rob of Zooms almost every day uh, on stuff. So, um, yeah, nice to see you face to face as well. Rob, it's been a long year, but I think some hopefully some light at the end of the tunnel for everybody. But during that time, you must be very proud of the job that the club and the, the trust have done off the field. Absolutely, Mel. You know, um, working in a in a virtual environment, um, I think we've demonstrated what's what, what can be achieved. And um, let's just looking at the the response from from fans going, you know, back twelve or fourteen months to the way in which they. Uh, you know, took things on board and then re responded to this little standing free campaign. Truly, truly amazing. Um, huge response to all of the great work that the Trust has carried out and, um, you know, a, a challenging season on so many fronts, but uh, certainly some light at the end of the tunnel as we as we look to the season ahead. Yeah. And Dave, I mean, it's a challenging year for, for so many people, but I know a lot of the supporters, you've spoken to a lot of them yourself, haven't you? Yeah, you know, it's been fantastic catching up with people because at the end of the day, you know, it's been, it's it's tough for everybody going through a pandemic it hits everyone and um, you know some of the calls I've made for to fans overseas uh, to to the south of England to Orkney and Shetland really um, really been kind of heartening in a lot of ways and you get as much out of it yourself if not more and when you chat to uh, to the fans too it's been an incredible year I mean for the club not whether not the only ones you know it's hit us for 10 million but we've, we're getting through it and um, we'll, we will get through it um, and come out of this stronger. I mean, everybody's been fantastic. Uh, all the stakeholders involved with the club, the fans in particular. But as Rob said, I, would, I take my hat off to the staff here at, at Pataudry, that our teammates that are here off the field and on the field have done a, a, just a wonderful job of being up for it. Because when that standing, still standing free campaign came out, they made 20,000 calls. You know, we touched a lot of lives. And um, it was just fantastic to see some of really, really tough situations. You know, our own folks, so to speak, had to, had to go through and some are still going through. And how we've responded as a club um, makes me really proud. Dave, Rob, we'll cover a few subjects today, uh, but to start with, as many supporters will be aware, the season tickets are now on sale for next season. Uh, so we're going to address some of the feedback we've been get, uh, get, getting from supporters since the campaign was launched last week. Dave, to start with you, what, what's the initial response been like? Well, the response has been, been fantastic. Um, you know, we, after just a few days, I think it was um, Friday, Thursday lunchtime, that we, we, we launched them. You know, as of last night, I think we'd sold 1,500 season tickets already. Um, so the response has been great, and about 12.5% uh, of those are actually new season ticket holders, um, which is, which is um, important as well as we, we, we try to drive forward, drive the club forward with an aspiration of getting to 15,000 season ticket holders, you know, in the next medium term. David, let's ask, why were season ticket sale, sales put on now? Um, because I think it was later than last year, but there's still a bit of uncertainty you know, as to what's going to happen next season. Yeah, we're probably uh, certainly a month, five weeks maybe, um, kind of behind or maybe more um, the launch that we would normally do. And of course, this is the toughest time of the year for the club and any club uh, financially because you know the season ticket money and, and the, the mon money that can we get uh, runs out as you get into each new calendar year. But we thought it was important to hold off to get um, see what was coming down the line. So you see between the Euros, um, between the, uh, I mean the, the, inf the infection rates and the number of people uh, dying, unfortunately, because of COVID, all kind of going in the right direction. And I remember talking to somebody at government level um, probably nine months ago, who said that if everybody over 60 gets vaccinated and everyone that's vulnerable gets vaccinated, it reduces the risk by 99%. It reduces um, the risk dramatically. So uh, that takes 99% of the, uh, the challenge away. 
And so hopefully with all of, with all of, um, with all of that, um, we see light at the end of the tunnel for fans getting back at the start of next season. Robert, it has been the main f question the fans have been asking. Just what are your thoughts on how confident are you of having supporters back at uh, the stadium at the start of the season? Mel, we, we, we remain very hopeful. You know, there have been some really positive signs in, in the last couple of weeks. We've seen 8,000 at the, at the Carabao Cup final at, at Wembley. We've seen a, a capacity crowd at the World Snooker Championships, um, and that's an indoor event, so you know, certainly some encouraging signs there. I think the Euros will, will really provide a, 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 a good window as to, as to what, um, some, where, where the um, challenges lie, further challenges might lie. But on the whole, um, you know, we're, we're certainly encouraged that we can look towards next season starting with you know, at least some, some degree of, of reasonable crowds. We know in, in, in Level Zero we could have 2,000 fans in already. Um, at, level, at Level 1 it's 1,000 and, and, and at Level 2 it's 500. So those, those numbers have gone up and, and improved as we've worked our way through the pandemic. As, as Dave says, you know, obviously the vaccine rollout is certainly helping, um, and just I think there's there's a level of optimism and 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 um, you know positive um, support from the fans. Just judging by early season ticket numbers, so certainly very hopeful. I'm just gonna just add that uh, mile that you know the Atlanta United, you know, in the states um, have just opened up 100 percent. So the games in the next week that will be held there, they should have 72,000 crowds at the games, and it's also worth our mentioning that we've, we've agreed a deal, the SPFL have agreed a deal with Sky whereby our season ticket holders will have virtual season tickets as well. So if there's any caution, let's say, for anyone early in the season or somebody can't get to, to the game for another reason, they'll be able to watch the, the games um, virtually like they have been doing this year as well. No, but Rob, it's a, and we appreciate Sky allowing the clubs to do that again for another season. I think it's a major concession on, on, on their part. Um, the uptake amongst certainly our season ticket holders and talking to all of the other clubs has been really positive. Um, so we're, we're delighted that we're able to offer that as, a, as an add-on for anybody who, who, who wants to buy a season ticket. Um, but as Dave says, you know, for, for one reason or another, might not be able to attend on, on the day. And we're going to continue to invest in our in our red TV product. I think we'll we'll, we'll talk about that in in, um, in the interview a bit later. But that's been a you know, a real kind of revelation for us in terms of the uptake and the interest in, in red TV. Um, and uh, you know a, a, a sizable investment on behalf of the club to, to to take that to a new level. Okay, Rob. Just if we can drill down a wee bit more of the season ticket memberships in more detail. I mean, what were the key considerations in setting the pricing? Well, Mel, you know, obviously, as again, as David said, so many people have, have been through really hard times. So, you know, thinking about a price increase for us wasn't really an option. So the, the idea of a price freeze was, was uppermost in our minds. That was really important. Um, we also very conscious that, you know, particularly in larger families where they've, you know, mum and dad are maybe buying four season tickets to include the kids. For us, the idea of a, an under-18 discount um, was something that we wanted to you know, give serious consideration to and, and having run the numbers and, and looked at the detail, the idea of a 50% discount for under-18s has gone down really, really well. That's, that, that's worked. And we've also honoured our promise of, of, a, of a refund. Now, there are a number of clubs in the league who've launched their season ticket campaigns and have gone nowhere near the idea of a refund. That's either con concealed to the fine print or is not being talked about at all. But we felt that was important. We talked about that at the beginning of the of the campaign, and that's very much there. And there's some wonderful kind of anecdotes and, and stories that we're hearing from the ticket office. Um, a great example of a, uh, a a dad who came in. He's got three season tickets. They're a family who've been very heavily hit by by COVID, um, and he didn't think that a, rep uh, a refund was the right thing to do by the club. Um, but when Jamie in our, in our ticket office was able to talk him through the fact that he could actually hold on to his three season tickets by taking um, the partial refund, um, he was absolutely over the moon. They've, they've had a really, really tough time as a family, but they've been able to do that. And the, the dads actually said um, he's vowed to pay back the refund when he's you know, back on track and back and employed. So it just gives you a real flavour. Two other really amazing stories. Um, uh, uh, an old age, pens old age pensioner who's never been a season ticket holder. Um, he saw our, our video, which I think has you know, gone around the world, been really moving. Um, and that kind of stirred the emotions in him. And he's gone and bought a season ticket. Um, really wonderful. And then another story, which I just, you know, I think is wonderful to relate. 
an elderly couple, both in their 70s, decided they didn't want to have a sort of a big financial outlay when season tickets fi- um, eventually launched. So they put five quid away a week each and uh, put it in a jar and then came into the stadium and um, bought their season tickets last week and found they had 100 quid over. So they've got a, you know, a nice treat of a, of a day out somewhere, plus their season tickets. So some, some lovely stories emerging from the fans. You should have guided them to the shop, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> No, I know the guys in the ticket office have been telling some of the stories. It's been fantastic. Guys, I'll put this to both of you. Maybe, Dave, you want to go first. But there seems to be a real focus on youngsters at the moment. I mean, is that part of a strategy? Well, before we went into the, the pandemic, it, a key part of our strategy was nurturing fans of the future. Um, because there's so many other things for, for children and for kids to do today. So if you take your primary school kids, for example, there are 43,000 of them in Aberdeen and Aberdeenshire. And so we came up with the Aber DNA Junior Programme, which is free uh, for, for our 12s and unders, whereby they would have membership of Aberdeen Football Club that would have tangible benefits. For example, they're a, they'll be able to get vouchers for two games a year, and so they can come in and claim their uh, vouchers you know, for these games. Um, and also, um, if, if we hadn't been going through the pandemic, each and every one of them, there's over 7,000 now, so it's a bit of a logistical challenge. It have to be done over a number of weeks or months. But we'll have them come into Pataudry with their family, come in the front door, come into the media room, sign for the dons, get photographed, videoed, go out on, on the pitch with their, their parents. And you imagine, I imagine I was seven years old and I had that opportunity as a dons fan. It would be amazing. But, you know, I think things like that... Um, will be really uh, really important for those fans in the future because if you take a seven-year-old in 10 years' time, you know, or maybe even seven years' time, these are the guys that want to be in the red shed, you know, pushing their dad to say, I want to be in the red shed. And so it's important to nurture these fans for the future when there's so much else for them to do this day and age. Yeah. Rob, do you want to start in? Yeah, I, you know, we, we've, we've got to look to, to build fans of the future, Mel, and, and I think that one of the key ways of doing that is finding ways in which we can enhance and, and develop the match day experience. Again, I know we'll talk about that later on in, 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 our, in our chat today, but that's a key driver for us. And, and if we can demonstrate to, to, to the younger crowd that there are you know, entertaining things that they can come and see and do prior to a match day and then have a, a really enjoyable match day experience, be that in the red shed or elsewhere in the stadium, then that's, that's really important. And as schools begin to open up again properly, you know, the, the, the DNA Junior Programme can really roll out in, in, in full force um, and we can reach even further, um, particularly through the, the, the community trust and the work that they do. Yeah. Dave, the season member cashback is something new for 2021-22. Can you tell us a wee bit more about that and what was the thinking behind it? Well, you know, <clears throat> part of the thinking um, around the um, season ticket cashback or season ticket member cashback, the me- word member is important because we want to extend, uh, drive the club through to a position where it's seen as being you know, a membership across the board. And a key part of that is us getting our systems to talk to each other. So the CRM system goes in place where you know, the ticketing system, system talks to the retail system, talks to the corporate systems, which are going to happen. But this, this aspect about being a member, I think, is important. And the message I gave a few weeks ago when we did the live Q&A was really all about... Um, it's about all of us. It's not my club. I'm a custodian for a period of time to do my bit and help the club. But it's really about, you know, it's our club. We need the fans that are season ticket holders, for example, DNA members, to encourage others. Give us a chance next season. You know, I think with the work we've done in the community in the last year, a lot of people have kind of fallen back in love with the club. That's not why you do the things that you saw the video with the, the young girl that was challenged uh, with mum who had drugs, that video and, and the video that uh, a few days later where, you know, uh, when we launched season tickets. But the message really to the fans is we have an aspiration. Aberdeen always sells between eight and 9,000 season tickets. We have an aspiration to get to 15,000, maybe a tall order. But it's an aspiration. It might take us three, five, ten years to get there. But with these initiatives of fans of the future and with the fans helping us, you know, I think that's going to be critical. So the message to fans is, for us is, is that if you help us get to 9,000 season tickets this year, each season ticket holder will get 5% cash back to spend at the club. If we get 13,000 season tickets sold uh, this year, it's 25%. So it's not 
stuff to be kind of sniffed at, so to speak. Um, but it's really us uh, rewarding the fans for helping uh, us drive forward and, and, and to start eating in, into that gap of eight to 9,000 to 15,000. I believe it's doable with the fan engagement that Rob and the guys are putting in place. And clearly, we've got a strategy on the field for playing, attacking, entertaining uh, uh, football. So that's the rationale behind Cash Whack. It's really rewarding fans um, who we'd love to see help us. You know, cajole a workmate, cajole another family member, a friend, to give us a chance uh, next, um, next season and to demonstrate what we can do on, on entertaining them in a day. Let's come on to that. Let's, let's give the fans a vision. What can the supporters expect to see at Petodja next season? Rob, come to you first, just off the pitch. What, what can they see? I mean, you've spoken a wee bit about the, the experience, the match day experience. Well, we're, we're just about, uh, with the weather changing, we're just about to start um, some, some external and some internal re redecoration, which uh, I think will certainly lift the, the place. So when people come back for the, for the first time in, in, in a very long time, they're going to see a, you know, a, a fresh-looking pitodri. Um, as I said earlier, when talking about the youngsters here, we want to um, look at activities around fan zones. We've talked about this for a long time, but we have opportunities to use some of our, our own facilities or, or bolting on facilities adjacent to the stadium where we can provide entertainment pre and, pre and, and post match. Um, we've also made a fairly significant change in, the, in the, um, our catering uh, partner has moved um, onto a, 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 new, a new supplier in the form of Baxter Story. So they've got some really interesting and innovative ideas in terms of how they want to approach the kiosks and the, and the concession stands to, to enhance that, um, that experience. Um, for fans when they're here. And if you look at the retail shop as well, we've put a lot of investment into technology into the store, um, which I think will, will make the, the, the sort of fan experience and the jour customer journey through um, the retail shop that much, that much easier. Obviously, had all of the challenges of the flooding um, six or eight months ago, which uh, yeah, caused a lot of damage to the club shop. That's obviously all been really um, you know, nicely refitted and, 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 and set up well. And I was in there when we opened on the, on the 26th of April to go and have a look at, at the great work that's been done. And it's a, it's a fantastic retail environment and would certainly encourage fans to, to come down and, and see all the great work that's gone on in there. You mentioned Baxter Story. Have they come up with the, the bacon buttery yet or not? <laughs> You'll have to ask the chairman <laughs> that, Mel. <laughs> Gosh, Rob McLean, um, I wish he hadn't. That hadn't that extra 15 minutes left that last year and I haven't lived that one down in fact um, I have been in fact the first game I came back to, to see they had um, they actually had the boardroom um, um, uh, the boardroom buttery right um, and and with bacon sliced in it and in the front the, it says um, we guarantee the ingredients here are going to harm you <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, maybe we get the Red Shed Rowie. Um, and so, uh, but where I come from in Aberdeen, it's a, it, it's a Rowie. It's a buttery in the posh areas. Rob's given us a vision off the field. So, Dave, what you give the fans a vision on the field? They've obviously got a new management team. And there's obviously going to be a new look side as well. A lot of new players coming in. I know there's been a lot of work going in yourself, Stephen, Stephen Gunn as well, over the last couple of weeks on that. Yeah, and, and obviously bringing in... Um, um, Stephen Glass and Alan and obviously Scott Brown will join as well in the summer. Um, it was important that we gave them a period of time to get to know the existing squad, uh, players that are here, um, and work with them uh, through this period. They still have only had a couple of weeks of training uh, with the guys, but what I, I would say is is that you know we, we made a we outlined, I think it was May of 19, Rob, we outlined yep. a clear strategy for the club. And any business needs a strategy on and off the field with fan engagement. And so the things that Rob talks about, um, how we greet fans here, how the, the food is, is, is considered important on the field, um, you know, that attacking, entertaining style of play. You know, Aberdeen as a club, as I look back in my time where Aberdeen have been successful with a combination of an entertaining style of play, a combination of experienced professionals with young players coming through. And I think one of the critical things for us is, is that you know, in the last few weeks with Paul Sheeran and with Stephen is giving um, a lot of the young players, you know, um, not a cameo at the end of the game, but full debuts. 
and um, and so I think that in and of itself is encouraging. Clearly, a number of players out of contract this summer. Uh, Stephen, I I'm sure, is going to wait till the end of the season. There's two more games to go and a number of training sessions to see um, what he wants to do. But but we have also had a number of sessions since I've been back where we've talked through potential targets, and I think you'll see over the coming. Um, days and, and weeks that you'll see some announcements um, um, that, that, um, that Stephen Glass and his team will make um, uh, on players coming in for, for next season. So, you know, it's an exciting time reminding ourselves that we've got through a 10 million hole with COVID and I just think everybody can't wait to get back to, um, you know, to, to, to experience the club. You know, we've all missed the club. I mean, when I saw that video, you know, coming around Merkland, because I, I used to walk up King Street, down Merkland Road, you know, through the turnstiles, into the South Stand or walk up to the beach end uh, when it was kind of open. And um, boy, I mean, it, it really is something that, um, you know, we've, we've all uh, kind of missed. So, uh, look, I'm, I'm optimistic, realistic, but optimistic that, um, you know, we will be ready for next season when it can. And rem let's remind ourselves, this isn't like a number of years ago where maybe it was Celtic in the league and Rangers were not there and Hearts and Hibs have been relegated a number of times between themselves and Dundee United were gone for five years. Next season is going to be probably the most competitive season we've seen in a long time, which is healthy as well. You know, our fans, heaven forbid we get come all back Love trips to Dundee United, you know, where we typically outnumber their fans. Love getting to Hearts and Hibs. And so, uh, very competitive next season, which I think is healthy for the league. But also, you know, we, um, we need to be ready for that. And I think we will be. Okay, just before we move on, or maybe one or two other subjects, Dave, I've got you first. What message do you have for supporters who are yet to renew or considering returning to Pataudry? Um, what message do you have to those still thinking about it? Well, first of all, I under, everybody understands that people have got, um, I mean, we're challenged in Aberdeen, not just by the pandemic, we're challenged by the downturn in oil. So first and foremost, you, you know, I, I'm really addressing those people that are, are able to, um, are able to, 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 to come to the game and, and, and get a season ticket. And as Rob said, with families, you know, we've got 50% off for the under 18s and even more if some of those are our DNA members as well. So um, we are making it as appealing as possible to come to the games. But the message is really this for those people. And we've probably got three or 4,000 lap season ticket holders over the last four or five years who we'll be contacting through our, 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 our call center. The message really is, is that, look, um, we, we'd love to have you back. Give us another season. Give us an opportunity to demonstrate to you the experience that, um, that, that Rob and the team are going to put in place for the games and the team with an attacking, entertaining style of football, which, which is our aim. So um, as the, we'd say back in uh, Garth D in the day, he's a shotty <laughs> next season. <laughs> Rob, just ask you the same question, but just... You know, the pricing was a lot of recognition and it has been a, a, a tough financially for a lot of families out there, hasn't it? Very much so, Mel. You know, we, we're, we're conscious, as, as Dave says, of the challenges and the, um, the, the, the different issues that have come people's way through, through the course of COVID. So we, we wanted to price the campaign um, a, a, a accordingly. But I think we've got so much to, to look forward to in terms of next season. There's a there's a sense of real optimism I, I, I sense amongst the fans, and um, you know we've we've seen some some interesting performances the last couple of games. Is you know um, uh, the, the quarterfinals aside, I, you know the, the, the last couple of games, particularly last weekend, you know there's there's a lot of grit, there's a lot of determination. It's fantastic to see Hedges back and, and doing what he what he does best. That was that was terrific to see. Um, but no, you know, we, 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 we look forward to, to next season with, with, with real optimism on, on so many fronts. Um, very much. And, and we've qualified for Europe again. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, we'd, we'd hoped clearly that we could have kind of driven for the place that um, gets you um, a Europa Conference group stage qualification. But listen, uh, we're seeded in the second round of that competition and there's all to play for. Um, as well and so there's nothing like a European night at Pataudry and listen we've not managed to get to a group stage um, 
Um, as much as we've tried and put effort in the last few years, we got close a number of times. But you know what? Next season starts and it'll be a new season and we get that opportunity. And, and we know just how much everyone loves the European night um, here. Yeah, and it'd be great to get one or two of the fans in the European away trips as well, Rob. Yeah. So it means a lot to them, doesn't it? They really enjoy those trips. Oh, very much so, yeah. yeah. Right, guys, we'll, just, we'll move on to one or two other s subjects. So, Rob, if you can just give us a wee update on some of the other commercial activities that are going on at the moment. Okay. Yeah, well, we, obviously, we talked about the retail, the retail store and, and, and the changes we've made there. I think, you know, obviously, closely linked to that is our, our, our new kit for the, for the new season with Adidas as our, as our official kit partner. They've been tremendous partners, worked very closely with us through all of the challenges that, that COVID have, have sent both our way and, and theirs. They've obviously got massive production um, challenges the world over, um, being the sort of global brand that they are, but they've done a terrific job. Um, and um, the, the kit will launch a little bit later than, than, than um, we would normally launch. We traditionally go sort of May and June for, for home and away, but it's looking more like it'll be um, late June, early July into and, and into, into August for the for the away kit. We will launch almost certainly with our training wear early because a lot of that's been been pre-prepared and, and, and ready to go. But um, really excited by, by both the home and the away strip for, for the new season. And, um, you know, the sort of lead times that we work on are, are remarkable. I've, I've already seen some of the plans and the, the, the ideas around the 22-23 kits as, as, as well. So, you, you know, these guys are well, well ahead of the game, but there's some, some fantastic um, items of clothing that are going to be headed to the, to the retail store. We continue to invest significantly in, in the Red TV product, as, we, as we've talked about before. Um, I think the changes that we've made to, to turn that into a full-blown production with a, you know, a pre-match show half time um you know with proper pundits really delivering us a a, a fantastic um show at half time and and, and post match analysis as well um you know this this is a a significant undertaking on, on behalf of the club. A, a lot of the smaller clubs really struggle to deliver um, some of the broadcast elements, but you know, we've got a cracking team in-house um, to go and deliver that, and we do it on a, on a, on a tight budget, but I think we produce a, a really fantastic show, and I think it's gone down really well with the fans, and particularly for those folks who can't make it to games, you know, that, that, that's there, and it's, and, it's, and it's a quality product, so that, that, that's been good. We've talked about the hospitality side of things as well, and, and, and the concessions and, and, and the kiosks. The change in Baxter story, I, you know, I feel very sorry for them in many ways. They fantastic product, and our hospitality lounges have, have lay dormant for for fourteen months, and they've not really been able to serve up any 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 um, uh, decent hospitality food just yet. But that that will come and that will change, and and uh, we're excited by all that they can they can bring and deliver. So, for fans who are looking for something a little bit different when when things open up, you know, we'd encourage them to to think about our our hospitality options as well. Yeah. Yeah, just in the red TV, I mean, it's also been a very useful tool this season to keep the, you know, the fans engaged, but it's something the club are going to keep investing money in, isn't it? Yeah, no, I think it's, it's important um, that the, the kind of broadcast side is, is, is expanded. As Rob said earlier, you know, we've put a significant investment in this last year for obvious reasons with, with the pandemic, and, and that investment will stay and continue. I mean, we've got plans here while we're still at Pataudry as well to find a couple of areas, a couple of nooks and crannies, maybe even the old boot room. It no longer smells of boots <laughs> after 100 and plus years. But um, the boot room is, a, is, is, is an area where we do interviews as well. So um, it would be really helpful for us to maybe do, uh, for example, during the week, one or two potentially live kind of red TV interviews with, with whomever, player, manager, et cetera, with the fans too. So we'll continue to look at that. We've actually, Rob and the team have just redone um, the uh, deal with our, our broadcast partner, um, and um, which is, which is um, a good deal uh, for, for, for both of us, but that's something we're looking to, to clearly um, expand uh, over time. Dave, you said whilst we're still here at Pataudry, can you give the fans any update on what's happening in regards to the new stadium? Well, uh, the, the, only, the, really, the only update, well, let's put it in perspective. We've been hit for 10 million, which, you know, is, we've got through this, but um, that in and of itself would be a reasonable uh, down payment start related to um, new stadium. Um, but what is, as everyone's aware, um, and, and I think this is exciting for the city of Aberdeen, that the, the city council, having um, done an amazing job with TECA, with the art gallery being 
um, reopened as well, um, are looking at the beachfront to, to renovate the beachfront. So the council is driving that, not us. Uh, we are a participant, so to speak. But if you think of the beachfront at Aberdeen, a lot of the assets that are there are, are end of life and shut down. Um, and so with a wonderful beachfront that's there, um, I applaud um, you know, the, the, the city for having big plans to renovate the whole area. One, not just, not just for, for people of Aberdeen, but to attract visitors to Aberdeen that will spend money as well, that footfall, so to speak. So we're part of that process um, and in listening mode related to uh, the council who would like the club to stay uh, in the city centre. The, the, the beach area was never an option for us before. And so um, we are a very interested party um, and excited about potentially being part of what could be, um, you know, uh, an amazing step forward for the city of Aberdeen. Well, guys, thank you. There's a lot to be excited about, isn't there? I think it's going to be a very busy summer for us all. <laughs> Just a final word from both of you. Robbie, Mel, great to see you in... Uh some of the uh, the fine garments that we've got on display in the retail store. Great to see some product placement. Well done. It looked better on Conor McClellan, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> your your words, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. But guys, thanks for the update. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Mel. <laughs>